Hi guys. So you guys have watched uh, one of the previous videos that I did that tells everybody that buying a hybrid or plug-in hybrid solely to save costs in Malaysia isn't actually gonna work okay first of all because we just to recap okay because our fuel prices are cheap relatively and we don't have things like congestion charges we don't have things like emission uh, penalties or taxes or things like that we do not have all that but buying a hybrid or plug-in hybrid in Malaysia you get to enjoy certain other benefits okay so this video I'm gonna talk about the benefits that I have experienced for owning a plug-in hybrid car for one year or you can treat it as my one-year review that's an X5 X Drive 40e hybrid at the back all right first thing first okay you get to drive like this that means the engine isn't started you are just rolling by in complete silence okay it is an experience that is so soothing it is also the kind of experience that you will only get if you were to be in a Rolls Royce or something this sort of comfort levels or quietness uh, is something that you can't achieve normally with an internal combustion engine all right it is just silent and smooth and there is a certain kind of really relaxing feel to it the second benefit that I notice when you have a, a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid in Malaysia is that sometimes when you buy food that is takeaway from roadside stalls and there are a lot of times whereby you have your family members in the car in a normal engine car in a normal car you stop by the other diners they're next to you your kids are in the car probably asleep and outside the temperature is like 34 35 degrees you you basically have to keep your engine running right because they're sleeping in the car you're waiting outside queuing and actually the kind of heat that emanates out of the car the starting engine uh, with exhaust and all that sometimes it is rather uh, not pleasant for uh, people around there who are maybe queuing as well but in a plug-in hybrid or oh, you you really just stop there and your car went into complete silence and it's not emitting anything there's no sound coming out from the engine bay but in the car they can be having their full blast air conditioning going on and it is just something that you you, you you realize it you consciously realize it that it is a benefit that you get out of it uh, the other thing will be at times I'm waiting and I don't have to keep my car starting this is the same benefit but it's just myself in the car um, I can just you know let it be in EV mode and then I just enjoy my music enjoy um, the complete silence and the air conditioning and I know that I won't poison myself with the exhaust emissions or something um, this happens sometimes in parking lots whereby we couldn't find a parking lot but my, my wife need to go down Mid Valley and go and you know pick up the kids and uh, I had to wait in the car because I couldn't find a parking I'll just sit in the car and wait so, um, there's no way to double park right you could have, couldn't find the parking these are practical concerns and just sit in the car so these are again another type of benefit that you get when you own a when you drive a plug-in hybrid car and another thing is uh the charging stations you know every shopping mall they have probably one or two handicapped parkings and to be honest uh i don't i mean let's put aside whatever uh, political correctness or not okay most of the time they're empty all right most of the time I don't mean all the time and um, but <laughs> somehow in Malaysia they just prepare you know they want to they want to appear to be um, environmentally friendly 
then they prepare charging stations or hybrid only parking and things like that it, it it makes some people feel good oh i drive a hybrid you know i can park in the green car zone or whatever uh, but to me i just look at it as a, it's a benefit that i get i know it's not fair i actually i do not agree with all this um, I even wrote an article about this. Uh, the article was titled um, A few cans of discriminating paint is all it's needed for these companies to appear to be environmentally friendly, which is absolute bullshit, all right? But people are like that. You get to enjoy the benefits. You quietly enjoy it, right? Yeah, there are a lot of places that we go and find designated parking for for hybrid cars uh, or plug-in hybrid cars you know it's uh, it's not fair it's not fair okay but for those that are for branding like what Mercedes did or BMW did I'm totally fine with that because that is they actually pay the shopping mall uh, and then it's for their marketing and branding purposes so that one is fine you just assume it's booked by someone else just like a car wash right they book a few bays to do their car wash that, that is fine but what I'm saying is certain malls they want to appear to be polit uh, politically correct environmentally friendly then they're going to just, just do those few parking boxes which I find completely doesn't make sense at all alright and um, these are some, really some of the benefits that um, if you buy a plug-in hybrid car or a hybrid car you get to enjoy the other thing would be the tax incentives all right the tax incentives that were uh, given by the government to encourage local assembly of hybrid cars now that this thing doesn't hunt this thing is not just there to uh, to give consumers a benefit to buy at a lower price and that's it okay no because there is a requirement that uh, they have to have some form of um, percentage of local parts supplied by local suppliers. So this move by the government is to encourage car makers to assemble their hybrids or plug-in hybrids in Malaysia to enable Malaysia to have suppliers that uh, will be ready to supply to these form of uh, do we still call them alternative powertrain but new forms of powertrain right is to encourage local suppliers to step up their game to not just supply car seats you know leather plastics and all that stuff anymore but high value items like um, these kind type of cars all right to be ready for them it doesn't need to be the transmission it doesn't need to be the engine it doesn't need to be the motors but maybe control units or stuff like that all right um, more high-tech stuff I mean if Malaysia has a supplier that can supply things that is cheaper than them buying from from whatever and it, and it passes all the uh, type approval quality standards of uh, international car makers why not right so this thing allows and then, and then on the other hand, you must have a market in order for them to come here to local assemble, in order for them to nurture your suppliers. So, pl plug-in hybrid buyers or hybrid buyers get a tax incentive for uh, locally assembled cars. So, um, you get to enjoy or save money or you get to buy a car that you would have otherwise not been able to afford. Where if not for the... Uh, hybridization of that powertrain and locally assemble of that all right though so these are all the great benefits that you get now the last part is something that i might i might sound I, I, ironic to my previous statement okay because to be honest if you were to drive to work daily right 20 30 kilometers or 20 kilometers to work and back to work and back with a plug-in hybrid, you really can manage to charge every night and then you go to office without using a single drop of fuel and then you charge again and then you come home, you know, vice versa. Um, you will feel good because you always end up with a full charge. I don't have that um, luxury because I stay in a condo. I haven't, I'm still trying to get, you know, get myself a, a, 
a plug point you know just to charge my 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 car but i haven't been able to do that still trying to let them understand still going through the process and all that so i've been driving this car for one year without a charging uh, point at home so i don't get to enjoy the full benefits of charging every night and going to work and back without using a single drop of petrol that is a real benefit i mean if you manage it also if you drive a hybrid uh, those owners who drive Ionics or those who drive Toyota Priuses or Prius C, you would have you would have known that hey shit man I can go 800 km or uh, maybe sometimes 900 km to between between fill ups right because if you drive smoothly if you drive normally smoothly you really are able to enjoy the benefits of a hybrid all right you save fuel and because of how it alternates between uh, let's say when you're moving off it uses the electric to move first right and then after that as you as you as you climb up speed it alternates and all that so it, it re reduces the load from the engine and actually it is actually taking power from when you're braking so is there is some form of uh, if, efficiency that that there are and there is some form of efficiency there. just that if we pull in the question of uh, if we hedge everything against dollar and cents or ringgit and cents then you are faced with uh, a myriad of other things that that let's say the issue that popped up with uh, re replacement battery costs but to be honest most people would have uh, I mean if you're a first first round of buyer you you would have maybe sold your car by then or something like that so I, I really don't think that is um, too big of a problem provided you really want to keep your car uh, forever and ever then I if you want to keep your car for a long long time then I, I'm not sure if uh, you will be happy with the, uh, with the uh, battery replacement costs but everything being said whatever cost that the battery gives you eight or nine years down the road it would have been negated by a lot of benefits that you get to enjoy uh, the tax benefits you know the um, maybe lifestyle um, all these things would have negated that cost anyway so uh, I made a Facebook post as well. I said you save up twenty ringgit a day, and by eight years time you would have about fifty eight thousand ringgit to replace your battery. <laughs> if you're really into all that dollars and cents and all that, so I'm gonna go through a little bit about uh, my experience about um, the great stuffs that I like uh, about driving a plug-in hybrid uh, I never thought myself would, would end up in a plug-in hybrid but it totally converts me and uh, I understand what I'm getting okay I'm not I'm not um, fooling myself into believing that I am protecting the the world the universe I'm clean I'm uh, I, you know that that kind of um, um, higher moral ground upper moral ground that some would, 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 would have they, they they think that i drive a hybrid i'm contributing to society protecting the environment environment for my future generations no but you are contributing towards the transition whereby it encourages car makers to pursue that and you are contributing but not practically owning it using it daily but by buying it you are encouraging car makers that you see when you invest money when you build a hybrid i am actually queuing up to buy your car all right i am assisting your transition by buying by agreeing to your direction not <laughs> the actual owning and daily part because um batteries they they they, they are a, a um using a lot of resources that can't be renewed and uh, recycling batteries is a huge problem because batteries cannot be fixed they chemically deteriorate all right so that's for another discussion um, I'm just gonna have to show what what I like so much about this car or some of the things maybe that I do not like 
over the course of one year and uh, in fact having said that having made that video that tells people about um, to not be confused by owning a hybrid all right uh, I'm actually seriously considering um, because I got this car for a, a discount this is a fleet unit a media unit that this car has been abused by uh, let's not say abused but it's been used by motoring journalists and you know motoring journalists when they drive a car uh, you can amplify that by 10 times versus normal normal owners because normal owners will take care of the car will drive smoothly you know motoring journalists will just whack the car all right so i got this for a discount when i got it so recently uh, volvo has updated the xc90 so the even though from exterior there's no difference at all but uh, they have upgraded the car you have a larger fuel tank now you have a larger battery capacity now you have newer softwares which this can be updated uh, but some older generations they are their ui isn't as smooth because it is an older generation uh, graphics processor unit okay so there are a lot of upgrades in the in the newer version and it even has a leather wrap dashboard full leather wrap dashboard and door panels and all that uh, full specifications this one doesn't have the uh, 360 camera so when i calculated another recent uh discounted unit i'm thinking to willing to let go of one year of repayment uh, in order to get the later version because i really enjoyed this car and i would love to have the latest version so i'm i was just wondering maybe i would maybe i should all right anyway let's go through the car all right this one cheers so i've come to own this car for one year so this will be sort of my uh i don't know one year ownership experience i'm going to tell you all about owning not just a plug-in hybrid car um, but the um, why i like or maybe some of the things that i do not like about this car all right uh, i still love how it looks every other time when i see another one on the road i will be admiring the car even though i'm driving one i still love how it looks it just looks subtle and um, unoffensive it's, it's a good looking car all right it is very well designed and it looks very family oriented and I just like the design of it um, I like the practicality of it the space that it provides and it's very nice to drive um, comfortable and um, yeah so I've done, I, I've not done all the, the Polestar optimization, you know, power upgrade and all that. I think it's powerful enough. 640 newton meters of torque, 407 horsepower. I, I, I just love the power. So this unit was, uh, doesn't come with the uh, 360 camera. So there are no 360 cameras here. But if you're talking about all the uh, radar, cruise control and all that, it has that uh, standard pilot assist. And uh, it looks very clean yeah so what i like about mostly is the interior i've done a few videos about it already right um the um, interior is very good looking in my opinion it is it's not the flashy type uh i know it's not as beautiful as those recent mercedes interior but there is something that i like about it that um it's just clean and understated and again inoffensive all right that's that's these are the things that i like about it and then when you start the car you get the chime you know and uh it's just it's just nice it's just nice now the graphics the graphics of this car is decent but i wouldn't say it is the best because if i were to compare between lcd screens speedo cluster and all that i think Mercedes did the best job uh, as far as I'm concerned okay Mercedes did the best job 
And uh, if you see this red seat, because it detects weight on this seat, so it will light up in red. If there is another person, it will light up in red as well until you uh, buckle up, okay? So it's, it's, it's a safety feature, you know. It has, it has this thing that monitors uh, all the safety stuff in this car. If a rear passenger comes on and put on his seatbelt, it will show here. It will show that seatbelt has been put on. I'll put on my seatbelt now. You can see it change. You see that? There's a belt over there. And then uh, it keeps it back into this little thing there. And that thing keeps monitoring uh, everything that has to do with safety. You see that? I take out my seatbelt, it will light up again. Just to remind you, I mean, Volvo is obsessive with safety. And then, of course, they invented the seatbelt and they make it very well clearly here since 1959. All right, for those who are not aware, Volvo invented the three pointed seatbelt and they gave out the patent to every single car maker for free. All right. So the next thing I love about this is, of course, the uh, sound system, the Bowers & Wilkins sound system is just fantastic. And um, it, I've so far, uh, I've not heard another sound system that is uh, comparable in terms of clarity. I mean, this in this segment, okay, uh, there's one that is uh, almost equivalent would be in the S-Class Coupe. Not the S-Class, but the S-Class Coupe. This one beats the one in the S-Class, all right. So I, I love the uh, the design and all that. This one is fantastic, okay? It is very easy to use. It's dead easy to use, in fact. It's so fast. Uh, all you need to do, you, you wanna, if you want to use the navigation, tap, tap, and then um, you see, you start typing, and then it will go, it will search. It's relatively responsive. And um, then you just press, and then it will guide you there. Start navigation. Done. The route is being calculated. See. Please proceed to the highlighted route. All right. And if you want to cancel your navigation, pop. Done. Done. All right. Um, this is, I mean, detected my phone. All right. It's for music. You can switch easily uh, between. Oh, it's playing music. Sorry. I have to press that. And then. Uh, See, it's connected to my phone. I can play anything now. All right. If I want to change to another phone, I just need to disconnect. I, I just need to press this to connect to another one that I've paired earlier on. All right. So it's very fast, uh, very easy to use. I love it. All right. It's showing zero now because um, I set it to reset every time. But if you were to ask whether it's very fuel efficient, um, it's not because I do not have a charging point, but it's acceptable for a two-ton plus car with a two-liter turbocharged engine. Um, I'm getting about nine, 10, 11 kind of uh, liters per 100 km. So, of course, I know the, the rated one with their testing shows 2.1. That is with the uh, standard cycle with battery and all that, all right? So, I love the sensors. Now, uh, the things that I think they could have improved. Now, the reverse camera is very high resolution. Um, but how do I put it? Um, the moment you put it back into drive and you start rolling and then very quickly it will, it will just switch away. But sometimes you are adjusting in between, you know. And um, it just sort of switch off too fast and for those with 360 right it should have an alternate camera you know where it shows you both views and all that um this one doesn't so um i think they could have improved the software with this and again i think mercedes and bmw did the best job when it comes to uh, ui software uh where reverse or 360 is concerned okay they did the best job here and I think uh, Volvo should should have a look at them. All right, um, this is red color because they have the, they have three designs to choose from. Um, it's very clear, very easy to read. But I think again, it is not as uh, nice as the ones in 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 the new Mercedes Benzes. All right, quality is fantastic in this car. Um, 
I love the overall quality. It's comfortable. It's nice. It's very easy to use. You know, all this, you know, it's it's fantastic. All right, I just I just love all this. Uh, of course, the gear knob, the Aura Four Crystal gear knob, and um, every time you start the car, you're touching this neural jewelry like starter. It's not a button. It's a switch, right? You turn it, and changing drive modes and all that. So these are all really good. The what? What has gone wrong in this car? Um, the blind actually. When I got the car, so this blind, um, it was a known problem. It is a global recall. The first supplier that supplies them the motor for the blind, this blind, um, happened to make a noise when you opened it. So the, in the early badges, when you open it, see now it's smooth because they replaced the whole thing for me. It's under their recall. But last time it was like making a cracking noise, like a rattling noise when uh, you close it. So they have replaced it. And um, yeah, other than that, nothing has gone wrong. Um, the whole car just has been perfect since uh, day one. All right. Um, nothing much. You get some space here. So the icon controls here. Okay, another complaint that I have for this car is on the rear seats. So, this car actually has three individual seats. Okay, one, two, three. Three individual seats, but the middle one, because it's narrower, it doesn't come with isofix points. Okay, um, but it does come with this one the booster seats for kids okay so of course if, 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 if you were to ask me I would have hoped that uh, the middle one has isofix points as well because I prefer to mount my car seats in the middle so that uh, my kid gets a full view up front and uh, you get to see your baby in the rear view mirror all right so that that is something that I would have appreciated um, other than that, uh, it's comfortable, it's nice. Um, and the second row is actually not as spacious as in the S90. The S90's second row is actually more spacious than the XC90's second row. So that is something good to know. If you are a boss, you want to buy a modern Volvo and you want somebody else to... Oops, the child lock. <laughs> Right, and uh, you get a little hanger here. You can adjust this aircon vents here. Love me. All right. As for the boot, sorry, it's a bit messy there. Parents, okay. So, uh, yep, that's the boot. You get this little thing here that comes with the car where you can actually, uh, if you if you if you can, if you have a dog and you know, put it behind, you can have that to barb it. Okay, so um, yeah, it's a nice. Oh yeah, I've done my tinting as well. Uh, Glass Tech Omega. Um, the reason I choose this tint is because uh, it is from a newer technology film. So what I mean by newer technology is that, see that little thing here? Okay, so why I choose this is because um, I have two other cars whereby it's using two different brands. So the thing is this, um, I've I might have said this in, in another video, to block sunlight, okay, or to give you the perception that you're blocking sunlight, um, some would use really dark tints which is illegal in Malaysia uh, some would use uh, high-tech films whereby they have layers of uh, metal layers that actually really block out the heat however those would give you a problem whereby just like my, my BMW is using the uh, top range um, should I tell should I say the brand uh, never mind, I don't say the brand all right 
uh, it's the top range one, but it blocks my smart tap. That means my, my toll booth uh, transponder, it blocks it. So I need to cut a hole. I need a hole there to get it to pass through. Um, another one, the top end one, will block your GPS signal from your phone. So it's very hard to, for you to use your Google Maps or your Waze, provided you open your window a little bit to let the signals come in. So those are other problems, all right? But those, they, they, they go through all those extreme measures to achieve about 50 plus percent uh, TSER, which is uh, total, sun, total, sonar, total solar energy rejection. And they reject about 50 plus percent uh, by using those measures. But this guy here, uh, Glass Tech, I think they use the same technology as uh, I think it's I think another another brand that has this technology is Lumar, whereby they achieve sixty seven percent. I think this one achieved higher sixty seven percent of total sun, total solar energy rejection, but it doesn't block my phone signal. It doesn't block my GPS signal. It doesn't block my smart tech, and it's a legal VLT. So I I that's why I pick pick this one. All right, so uh, these are some of the things that I've done with the car. And uh, nothing much already. Uh, what else I need to talk, talk about? Oh, the tires. I love the tires. I absolutely love these tires. The uh, Latitude Sport 3. See this one with the Volvo sign here? It's made for Volvo. Uh, but you can buy it outside as well. You can buy it elsewhere without the uh, Volvo sign. But then uh, it's, it's totally... Fantastic! This tire is, uh, I thought it's just comfort and uh, you know, quiet tire, but <laughs> screen, okay. But this tire is, uh, I will call it a high performance SUV tire. In fact, because it just gives me such a good um, sense of um, control, and it's very comfortable and is grippy, wet or dry. Um, I've done a few Genting runs with this car. Uh, I've, I've, I didn't record it, uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right. So this is uh, my experience of uh, owning a plug-in hybrid for a year now. Um, will I still buy a plug-in hybrid car? Yes. Most definitely. Um, it's mainly because of the ability to transition and... It's absolutely quiet, like just now the car has started, I'm always doing all that. I love that, there's no heat emanating out from the car. I love, I love all this, and sometimes I can whirl by quietly. Like I, when I send my kid to school, I'll put it into um, EV mode, right? And it's quiet, it just rolls quietly in there and to pick him up and things like that. And um, I love all this, and um, I will definitely go with this route even though I made an explanation that I'm, I con I know by doing this I'm, I'm not actually like oh I'm saving the world and all that no 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 it's not it's not it's really for other benefits that I'm enjoying so um, yeah do I realize that uh, it might cost more later on yeah yeah I realize that but um, as a car enthusiast you 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 know that when you drive a turbocharged car, you, you're going to involve more complicated piping and all that, cooling and all that, and you're going to run into more problems than if your car doesn't have um, turbocharging or force induction, right? A, a, a naturally aspirated 2-liter NA car, you know, simple car, what's going to go wrong? Nothing much, right? Uh, transmissions, if you want to have... Um, dual clutch transmission, those high tech transmission stuff. Of course, it's gonna be, it's gonna give you more problems perhaps than a manual gearbox or a torque converter, a simple torque converter, right? So these are all the trade offs, right? You can have a, a simple rear wheel drive car, right? Just an engine, a transmission, a, a long shaft to the back, and that's it. Very very simple setup, versus a, a more sophisticated setup a front wheel drive actually a front wheel drive car is more sophisticated you know you have a lot of tie rods and all that stuff in front uh, some of them might leak oil blah 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 and then the more complicated ones would be the four wheel drive 
right? Four-wheel drive cars here, yeah, you have a lot more oil change, you have a lot more parts underneath, and then uh, now you have cars with rear wheel steer. I know last time they had rear wheel steer, but now these are electronically controlled. Uh, it's crazy. So it's a trade-off. You want to get something that gives you the benefits when you need it, then that means there are trade-offs. There are trade-offs that you have to... There's, again, there's no such thing as, you know, I want a car that is super high-tech, super luxurious, blah, 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 has all these features, but then it's just as reliable, just as dependable as some simple, basic car that just moves. It can never be that. All right? So, uh, yeah. That's my experience of owning a plug-in hybrid for a year. And um, I'm going to conclude this video that by saying that I will still, I will still uh, go with a plug-in hybrid or an EV or a hybrid or something like that. Of course, that doesn't mean I do not like internal combustion engine anymore. So, um, yeah. So I guess some of you who watch this, you have to real, you have to understand that I'm trying my best to give you multiple point of views. I have some commenters who are just like, like oh, so now you like or don't like? You know, all they're asking is, you, 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 yes or no? Yes or no? Come on. Right. Okay. Anyway, um, what else you need to know? Um, throw me a question. And uh, I guess that's about it. So I really, really wanted the, uh, the latest version of the uh, XC90. Uh, there's there are there are quite some upgrades and uh, I don't lose much in depreciation because I got the, the that 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 car, I, I got this car for a great discount anyway and um, I I should I should I should anyway cheers bye bye.